and welcome to It's a Mystery and this week's collection of mysterious stories and bizarre tales. Yep. Once again, Tristan and I have been out on the trail of some really amazing mysteries. And of course, here in the studios, we'll be attempting to solve some more of them. What on earth was it that this man saw as he was out jogging? And what are you scared of? We give some tips on how to get over fear. And we investigate why some pictures always seem to stare at you. It's a mystery what can fall from the skies. Now Gail's got two strange reports for you. See if you can work out how they're connected. Imagine a scene like this. It was a clear September morning and a man was going on his usual early morning jog along the seafront. Just for a moment, he stopped to get <sighs> his breath back. As he gulped the salty air into his lungs, he thought he could hear the gentle buzz of an aeroplane high up in the sky. He peered into the distance, trying to spot the aircraft, but could see nothing visible against the sky. Suddenly, however, the stillness of the coastline was shattered. With a jolt, a bright flash of light swooped down towards the horizon, accompanied by an explosion which took several seconds to fizzle out. The man rubbed his eyes in disbelief, trying to make sense of what he had just seen. Weird stuff. What do you think it was that he saw? Well, here's the other strange tale, and see if you can work out what's going on and how it's connected to the first story. One Sunday evening, a brother and sister had finished playing with their board games and were starting to get a bit fed up. Oh, come on! I deserve another go for that! No, you do not! Yes, I do! You it's don't! True. Oh, you two, stop getting under my feet and go outside. But there's nothing to do. Go outside and tidy your things. But it's his mess. I don't care. Just both of you go and get on with it. It's getting late. Go on. So the children went outside to clear away their bits and pieces. Oh, come on, you were playing as well. Yeah, you were cheating. Suddenly, their attention was diverted to something strange in the sky. Look at that! It looks like some kind of rocket. Well, whatever it is, it's getting closer and it's coming straight for our house. As the bright object streaked through the sky and towards the house, the children watched in terror. There was a huge crash and the sound of splintering wood. What on earth was that? I'm not sure, but I think it's just gone through our roof. <sighs> Don't worry, I'm fine. I heard it too. You two stay there. I'll go up and see what happened. Pass me up the torch. The children's mother fumbled on the floor of the attic. She rummaged among the junk directly beneath the hole in the roof. Oh my goodness! What, what is, is it? it? It's a lump of rock. It's crashed through our roof. So what's going on? A man running by a beach sees a strange flash of light in the sky and two kids see a bright light and then find a lump of rock has come through their roof. So what's the connection? Well, the answer to the riddle isn't a freak weather condition, but literally stuff falling from outer space. Yep, ever since the first trip to the moon, man has launched more than 30,000 objects into space. A small fraction of these are working satellites. The rest is rubbish left from old rocket missions, old space probes and other man-made junk. Around 22,000 objects are still out there orbiting around the Earth. These pieces of junk, which vary in size from being as small as a pea to as big as a house, as well as other lumps of rock from space, can sometimes plunge towards Earth at tremendous speed and burn up in a fiery display when they hit the Earth's atmosphere. They're known as meteors. So it was one of these fiery streaks of light that the man saw as he ran along the beach. And if the last little bit of meteor doesn't get burnt up, which is very rare, it is known as a meteorite. And it was one of these that fell through the children's roof. Here's one for you. It's a mystery. What scares you? Are you afraid of the dark? I'm not. Are you afraid of snakes? No. 
Well, what about this then, Mr. Banks? Oh, you knew I was afraid of spiders. I didn't actually know that you didn't like spiders, but a lot of people are afraid uh, of them. In fact, people are scared of all sorts of things. But what is being scared all about? Well, being scared of some things is actually good for you. It stops you getting hurt. But other fears are of things that don't really hurt you. It's just that for some reason, you don't like them. So what actually happens to us when we're scared? Okay, well, if you don't mind, Tris, yeah. we'd just like you to come up <laughs> over here <laughs> Take and me away lie from it. down. Ah, yeah, you just wait and see <sighs> what we've got lined up for you. Because we'd like to show you exactly what happens to our bodies when we are scared. So Gail's going to bring the spider a little bit nearer to oh. you so I can show what happens. So are you okay with this? Yeah, sure. yeah I suppose so. Sure? All right, go ahead. Then. Shall I come? I'm coming nearer, Tristan. Okay, I'm coming well, nearer. When you're scared, your pupils dilate. They open up even wider so you can see things better in an emergency. I'm getting nearer, Tristan. Ooh, right. Spider. Also, what happens to you is your heart rate increases. <laughs> see that? There you go. You also tremble. You shake. You break out into a sweat. And your mouth becomes drier. Yeah, oh, you're not kidding. <laughs> okay, Ooh. I'm going to take it away. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't do that to you, Tristan. <laughs> you oh. see, all those changes that happened to your body, Tristan, were signs that it's reacted to your fear. Now, it's a good thing, really, because in nature, if you were scared of something really life-threatening, your body would have been prepared to either stand and fight or to scarper. All right, so solve this one. How can you get over that feeling of fear? Well, start by thinking of something that you're scared of, like you're scared of spiders, Tristan, or maybe you're afraid of the dark or speaking in assembly, whatever. Have you thought of something? Now, here's some tips on how to help get over them. Start by relaxing. Breathe steadily, go on. Do it, in and out. Yes. And again, in. in. I know. Did you feel relaxed yet? Um, yeah, a, a little bit, yeah. Right, okay, just, just close your eyes and just try to imagine the thing that you're scared of. Now, for you, Trist, it's the spider. So, yeah. have you got that picture in there? Yeah, yeah. Now, imagine yourself touching it. Oh. Go on. What <laughs> do you think, is it? I could think of better things to imagine, but... You know. <laughs> okay, well, just hang on. Let's, let's just keep it going. Try to feel a bit happier with, with that image in your mind. Now, just slowly open your eyes. Now, how do you feel? Um, a little bit better. Yeah? Just yeah. a bit calm? Yeah. Do you think you could touch the spider uh, now? Just calm it. Cool. I could give it a if shot. If I bring it over... Go on, give it a go. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Go on. I just saw it like, oh, I can go see on. its legs Come moving on. around. Come on. You can do it, Tristan. Oh, you did man. It. You did it. Yes. What about that then? Uh -huh. well, so there you go. Just a few tips about getting over your fears. Remember, just try to keep calm, breathe steadily and pretend it's not as bad as you think. And another thing, it's always a good idea to chat to your family and friends about the things you're scared of or worried about. Yeah. yeah, and they say that admitting and facing your fears or worries is better than running away from them because you'll eventually realize that things aren't as bad as you thought. Yeah, thanks a lot guys. Have you ever heard of a chiropody clinic? It's a place where people go to when they have problems with their feet. Well, as we often say, mysteries can happen anywhere, even in places that look after feet. So it's a mystery what caused the weird happenings in a chiropody clinic late one afternoon. Thank you very much. If you have any more problems with those feet, just give me a ring and make an appointment. Okay, okay. Thank I'll you. show you out. It had been a pretty normal day in the clinic. As a foot specialist, Mr. James had spent all day looking at verrucas, flat feet, and ingrowing toenails. So, as he saw off his last patient for the day, 
He was looking forward to a nice, relaxing evening. Goodbye, Mrs. Kettle. Mr. James took one final look at the appointments book to check there had been no last minute bookings and then phoned his wife. Oh, hi, it's me. Yeah. I should be home in about oh, 20 minutes. Lovely. Okay, fine. He then went back into the office to collect up his notes and tidy his desk. Suddenly he heard a noise coming from the other room. He just said goodbye to his last patient, so he thought he'd tell whoever it was that the clinic was closed. But when he looked out into the main reception area, he found he was alone. Hello? 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 Then suddenly there was another sound, like someone moving about. Mr. James could feel his heart begin to beat faster. He slowly peered around the corner. And again, there was no one there. <sighs> Scary. So, okay, what's going on? After a hard day's work, Mr. James is left alone in the clinic where he starts hearing strange noises. But when he goes to investigate, there's no one there. Was the tired chiropodist imagining things after a stressful day? Was it a prank by some cheeky school children? Well, you just won't believe what happened next. Fighting his rising sense of panic, the chiropodist stuffed his notes into the files, making for a hasty exit. The sounds became more persistent. Mr. James was in no doubt that there was someone or something in the reception. Frightened, he realised that in order to leave the building, he'd have to go through the reception area. Taking a deep breath, he stepped into the room. The noises abruptly stopped. Irresistibly curious, he went over to where the sounds seemed to have come from. He looked around and suddenly caught something move out of the corner of his eye. He bent down and came face to face with the elusive customer. It was nothing more than a large cockerel. He realised that he must have missed the bird originally because he hadn't thought to look on the floor for the noisy culprit. The cockerel seemed very weak and as he lifted it up he discovered that it had a sore left foot. Mr. James closed up and took the bird to the vet. <laughs> I know, but believe it or not, it's true. The phantom patient turned out to be nothing more than a phantom cockerel with, of all things, a poorly foot. Well, the bird was eventually returned home safe and well, so mystery solved. Or was it? Mr. James may have found the answer to the strange noises, but he couldn't explain why, out of all the different houses and shops on the street, a bird with an injured foot had chosen to walk all the way to his chiropody clinic to come and visit him, a foot doctor. A simple coincidence? Or was there another more mysterious reason? What do you think? Hello, my name is Stuart Rayner. I come from Chingford in North East London. I woke up one day with a very strange accent. In September of 1996, I was riding my motorbike on the racetrack at Brands Hatch. The race was going well, and then unfortunately I had an accident and came off my bike. Everything went black. I woke up two weeks later in hospital and nurses told me I had been very poorly. I was very lucky to be alive. It was when I opened my mouth to speak that people realised something very odd had occurred. Although I normally have an East London accent, I sounded like an American cowboy. My sister first noticed it when she came to see me. When I visited Stuart in hospital, I spoke to him quite a lot. One conversation was about my car. He really surprised me because he pronounced the word garage as garage, which made him sound like he came from America. 
I also found that I would respond to people with words like, gee, sure, and wow. I even referred to my mum as mom. It was really peculiar. My accent sounded American for several months, and then eventually it faded away. What a strange story. So what could have caused Stuart to talk in an American accent? Well, strange as it may seem, what we do know is that Stuart isn't the only person that this kind of thing has happened to. There is one report of an English lady waking up with a Scottish accent and a really weird story of a woman suddenly being able to speak fluent French. Now, there is a rare medical condition called foreign accent syndrome, but the experts still don't know whether this is what Stuart was suffering from. It's a mystery to me why some paintings of people's faces seem to stare at you no matter where you stand in the room. Yeah, if you keep looking at those eyes, it's really freaky the way that she seems to watch you wherever you move around the room. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's just your mind playing tricks on no, you. No, no, no. You Maybe. reckon? Well, come and have a look at this. Now, this is the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. And if you move around her, keep looking at her eyes, and the same thing happens. She seems to sort of stare at you. Yep. She definitely yeah. seems to be watching me as I move. It's hmm? weird. So, is it an optical illusion? Is it a clever artistic trick? Or is it something more spooky? What do you think? Well, da Vinci had spent years studying and sketching the human face. And if you look at this painting of the Mona Lisa, you can see her eyes and mouth are blurred. So you can't really tell her exact expression. And that may be one reason why her eyes seem to follow you when you move around the room. Well, it's not a bad theory, but that's just the Mona Lisa. What about other portraits that seem to stare? I mean, ones that haven't got such blurred features. Well, another theory was put forward only last year by a scientist. After making a random study of nearly 300 famous portraits, he thinks he's discovered something very interesting. Now, let's take a look at the Mona Lisa again. If we put a line down the middle of the picture, we discover that one of her eyes is located on this central line. Now, if we look at another famous painting, come over here. Okay. See this one. We put the centre line down again. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Yeah. Now, we see that this one, once again, that there's an eye in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Works, don't In it? fact, many paintings of faces were tested, and it's been found that one eye always seemed to sit on a centre line. Now, look at this one. So, they appear to be similar. One of the eyes, again, sits on the centre line. So, has an amazing secret been unearthed that solves a mystery? Is this a clue as to why portraits appear to stare at you as you look at them? And if so, how does it explain why the eyes seem to follow you around the room? Well, the problem is, mm -hmm. we don't actually know. But it's an interesting theory, isn't it? I think it's all just a big coincidence. No, we still haven't solved why some pictures seem to stare at you when you walk around the room. No, and the truth is, no one has. But they just do, don't they? So that's it, some more mysteries solved, yet there's plenty more out there to investigate. Here's one last mystery for you to try and figure out. A guy named Johnny was mad about the colour red. All his furniture in his bungalow was red, the walls were red and the carpet was red. So why weren't the stairs red? Can you solve the mystery? We'll reveal the answer next time. week's final mystery was what five letter word becomes smaller when you add two letters to it? And the answer is, the word small becomes smaller when you add two letters E and R to it.